At its core, Infinity Battlescape is a pure multiplayer space combat shooter. The ships are designed for that, the gameplay is designed for that, and already here, in this very early build, Infinity Battlescape achieves its combat-focused goals far better than some other early build space games that literally have more than 600 times its budget. But whilst Battlescape is combat-centric, it is nonetheless set in an exquisitely beautiful environment. In the previous video, which you can see linked, I gave an overview of what the game is about. In this video, I'd like to focus on the game's amazing technical achievements and the beautiful worlds. And in case you're wondering, the combat and other gameplay is something I'll be coming back to in a later video. Now, Infinity Battlescape is due to head on to Steam in early access on the 27th of September, and for early access title, the game is already in a very decent state. It's very playable and extremely stable, and naturally, a lot more of the game mechanics still need to be added. However, developers iNova have been very good at regularly updating the game during its alpha and beta phases, and there's no reason to think that won't continue during early access. By the time the game arrives on Steam, for example, it will already have an updated UI compared to the one that you are seeing here. So the worlds of Infinity Battlescape then are something that I personally find stunning. They may lack a few elements that would kick them onto the unbelievable truly next level, such as volumetric clouds or vegetation, for example, but those things are not the focus of the game. Instead, the planets serve as both a backdrop to the gameplay, as well as locations for some pretty large-scale spaceship battles to fight over resources. As you can see in this footage, entry into the planet's atmospheres and onto the surfaces is completely seamless. There's no transitions. Also, entering warp mode again is entirely seamless. The only thing you will notice here is that your ships pick up to an extremely high velocity, maxing out at 300,000 kilometers a second. Now, in its approach to how it handles velocity when approaching objects and planets, and you may be wondering just how, uh, at that speed, you can actually hit your target and arrive where you want to arrive, well, Infinity Battlescape is very similar to Elite Dangerous in this regards. The ships naturally inhibit your speed, but this never does so to the degree that you feel as though your ships are moving too slow. And what this ultimately means is that you can rapidly travel between locations whilst retaining the sensation of flying a spaceship, and it also allows you to arrive with pinpoint accuracy at any destination, and you'll see a clip of this further into the video. Now, on my previous video on Infinity Battlescape, I noticed a few people in the comments section discussing a previous project from the same studio, or at least some of the same developers from that studio, called Infinity The Quest for Earth. Now, this project went into some very brief development phases during the early 2000s, and some of you may remember the video showing the tech demos of seamless planetary landings at the time, and that was something that back then was unheard of, at least with those type of graphics. In fact, they were so good that a few people thought the tech demos had been faked. They hadn't. The engine was just that good. And at that point, all the way back in the early 2000s, the project was basically a hobby worked on in the spare time by an extremely small development team. They occasionally publicly talked about plans to turn the engine into a fully-fledged MMO, which would have become the aforementioned Quest for Earth, but that project never really got legs under it. Infinity Battlescape, then, is a different project built on the same ruse. It comes from the same original developers, however, since then, the team has grown and the project has been in full development for a number of years now. In fact, Inova completed a successful Kickstarter campaign back in 2015, raising around $350,000, and they have managed to work on uh, the game for years on those funds, bringing the game to its current state. Now, whilst I've been talking, you've seen me in a fair few different environments. Right here, we're in a ring system. The game actually has four planets that you can land on, with a central planet, a large gas giant, making up the central body, which you can't land on just yet. Now, you've actually seen me fly over a few planets, and you've seen me flying down to planets seamlessly, and the game manages this very, very well. However, I will point out that it's lacking any atmospheric re-entry effects. I'm not sure if that's something that will come at a later date, but for now, it certainly does feel very much needed. But nonetheless, it's more than made up for with these type of environments. Just look at this. The small moon over in the distance is something we can travel to. It'll take about two minutes to get there. I will put a cut there, but I do want to show you something about this. 
So earlier on I mentioned how easy it is to actually arrive at specific targets. Right here on the UI we can see a Xanthus station, that's a little blue reticule that I'm just turning the ship towards. Now at this point the game will start inhibiting your speed, in fact it did this quite a bit early on, but never so much that it feels like you're actually travelling too slow. We've still got control over the velocity of the ship, we can slow it down here if I want using the mouse wheel, or accelerate it up, you can see my speed on the uh, right hand side of the HUD. And here you can see us approaching the station, completely seamless, very very easy to narrow in and zero in on anything that you want to uh, fly towards, and this includes enemy ships, if you actually see any of them off in the distance. So uh, stations like this are locations that players will fight over. There's also other planetary bases which we're heading towards right now. You will see a small conflict going on over the top of that base. In terms of talking about combat though, as I said earlier, that's something we'll come back to in another video where we'll focus purely on the combat and the gameplay. For now though, I just wanted to show you these environments and the epic sense of scale that they convey. So over there in the distance you can see a conflict going on. I'm going to zoom right over there and, well, when you're over there it doesn't feel so small, but really in your face. And that is the thing. Infinity Battlescape will be made up of dozens of conflicts like this raging across the star system, and you're about to get involved in any of them. I'll be back with more videos on this soon. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.